morning, my name is Josh from Cyclones Oz and here is your detailed weather forecast update nationwide for Thursday, May 29th, 2025. A lot to get through today, strong low pressure system in the Tasman Sea, plenty of rainfall on the cards for Queensland's uh, central coast and into the southeast as well. More rainfall on the cards for New South Wales as well into early next week and a powerful series of cold fronts in the southwest of Western Australia. Let's jump straight into everything right now. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing and also leave a like on the video while you're at it. But just starting things off briefly with a look at the east coast plenty of cloud activity now streaming through the Northern Territory into the northern half of New South Wales, being drawn in by that powerful extratropical cyclone moving into the New Zealand area at this point in time. Severe weather is no longer occurring through any part of Australia at this time. It is a little bit of a calm morning. There are some stronger wind gusts across the Victorian coastline, especially into the east and parts of the New South Wales coastline as well. And it is also quite a chilly start of the day as well into some of the high country areas in uh, New South Wales. Goldburn at minus two degrees Celsius this morning, very cold up there and multiple locations through New South Wales into the low single digits and it's also pretty cold through Tasmania's high country as well. But apart from that, nothing severe, nothing too interesting, nothing too crazy going on. But if I flick on the radar imagery, you can now start to make out that there is some rainfall moving through interior parts of Queensland. Overnight, we've had falls between 15 to 25 millimetres across the southwestern corner of Queensland as well, on top of the couple of hundred millimetres that they had back in March. So a very small further contribution expected to the water levels now flowing into the Lake Air region but it is going to be negligible at this point in time, 25 millimetres, even out there after the record flooding that they've had. It's just going to leave a few puddles around which will dry out very quickly over the next couple of days. A solid stream of rain now moving through into the central northern parts of Queensland, north of Longridge, through Huenda and Alpha, and then across towards Jericho, Tambo and Claremont at this point in time. Rainfall accumulations have been light for the most part. We're not looking at any really serious rainfall accumulations through this part of Queensland, uh, and we're not expecting anything serious to occur throughout the course of today. We uh, in terms of this rainfall here. But if we turn this over to the forecast aspect, we are expecting some more serious rainfall accumulations to begin to develop uh, later tonight as this uh, weather system meets up with a trough that's going to be situated along the central Queensland coastline. This running from a low pressure trough north of Townsville, right down the central Queensland coastline through Yapoon, Rockhampton, Gladstone, right down towards Fraser Island. This moisture band here that's moving through central Queensland will meet up with this low pressure system. And we're expecting a kind of convergent zone uh, type system to uh, unfold later on tonight and into Friday and Saturday and that's going to give way to some relatively significant rainfall accumulations through this part of central Queensland especially along the coastline we're expecting isolated periods of heavy rainfall through much of central Queensland and even into the north Queensland coastline heavy rainfall is most likely outside of Mackay around the Yalbury area and then up towards Proserpine and into the Proserpine River catchment region and we're also expecting the chance of some heavy rainfall through Friday afternoon and evening into Saturday morning around the Rockhampton Yapoon area inland towards Billawilla and then south towards uh, Gladstone, Agnes Water, and then extending a little bit further south through Saturday morning around the Agnes Water and Bundaberg area before rainfall clears out of the central Queensland and the north Queensland coastlines through Saturday afternoon and evening, and rainfall then finally clearing out of southeast Queensland, which I'll get to in just a hot second through Saturday night and into Sunday morning. Rainfall accumulations could be significant, and the Bureau of Meteorology is highlighting a potential 100 millimetres of rain coming through for the Yapoon area, which is quite significant for this time of the year. Let's take a look at what the forecast modelling is suggesting right now over the next four days. This is from the European forecast here and one that I deem to be pretty reliable. It's been rock solid over the last couple of days. Very consistent that's for sure. With a slight update in the rainfall now bringing it a little bit further south and a little bit heavier further inland as well which means Rockhampton could pick up some relatively decent rainfall accumulations. So on top of the rainfall that's already falling across the inland parts of Queensland just a few more drops of rainfall expected out there. Five millimetres at the most and then that's going to turn to 25 to 50 millimetres of rainfall most likely coming through Friday and Saturday. The area south of Charters Towers, Townsville and Bowen. Falls will be at their heaviest like I said around the Yalbury area where we could see up towards 40 or 50 millimetres. Mackay looking at a potential 25 millimetres at this point in time and then heavier falls as you get further south especially down around the Serena and the Ogmore area. Falls could be as heavy as 60 or 70 millimetres or so throughout the next four days. The heaviest falls will be through the Rockhampton area down towards Gladstone where we could be seeing falls between 80 to 120 millimetres of rainfall with the heaviest accumulations now in the forecast models as high as 100 50 millimetres now pretty much situated right on the coastline. That's plausible and if we do get some heavy bands of rainfall streaming through, especially for a consistently long period of time through Saturday uh, morning, we will be seeing these rainfall accumulations materialise. Falls up to 100 millimetres expected as far inland as Biloela and then light falls expected further inland from there. Moderate falls between 40 to 80 millimetres expected south of Agnes Water through Bundaberg, Fraser Island and then down towards southeast Queensland which I'll get to in just a second. But yes, yeah, some very decent rainfall accumulations even for this time of the year 
we're looking at non-tropical uh, weather systems moving through into the tropics at this point in time. It's been a very, very weird uh, last couple of days for the tropical regions of Australia. And now it's central Queensland's turn to cop a bit of a share of the rainfall here. Again, good congruency between other major forecast models. They're all suggesting in the ballpark of 40 to 80 millimetres being quite widespread through this part of Queensland, with some ice water falls up to about 150 millimetres expected around the Rockhampton and the Yapoon area. The heaviest falls will occur through Saturday and then the rainfall pretty much completely clearing out through Saturday afternoon and into Sunday morning. Now, in the way of severe weather, we're not expecting any crazy thunderstorms or strong winds at this point in time either. And just to uh, reference uh, southeast Queensland, we do have a little bit of rainfall coming through there as well. The rainfall is going to come through in a later time frame compared to what the rainfall is going to be coming through uh, across the north central uh, the north central coastline into the north coastline of Queensland. Moderate falls expected through Saturday uh, morning and into Saturday afternoon from showers streaming through from the southeast, and a couple of thunderstorms still expected to continue into Sunday morning, and then the rainfall pretty much completely clearing out of southeast. Queensland through Sunday and into Monday just a few showers lingering at this point in time before the next weather system begins to kick up for New South Wales. Significant rainfall accumulations beyond 100 millimetres aren't reasonably expected across southeast Queensland. We could be seeing falls as high as triple figures around Capulchura, Bribe Island and Maroochydore but significant rainfall accumulations around the suburban Brisbane area even, to the, even into the suburban Gold Coast at this point in time isn't really expected. This will be a North Brisbane South Sunshine Coast focused weather event here and again 80 millimetres of rainfall not really a problem even at this time of the year so flooding is not a concern at this point in time of this weather system is stock standard rainfall coming in for this time of the year but it could be a wet one this weekend around the brisbane area especially further north through the northern suburbs Redcliffe, and then up towards cobble to bribey island and maroochydore man my brisbane geography is good in the wake of tropical cyclone alpha and i'm very very proud of that any corrections which i know there's not going to be let me know in the comment section down below just having a bit of fun with everybody this morning uh in terms of rainfall for the northeast of new south wales there's nothing coming through until about Sunday afternoon and evening and then we've got another round of relatively significant rainfall coming through from about Monday or Tuesday. We're going to see this low pressure system move through central New South Wales. Now that's the low pressure system kind of powering that northwest cloud band that's delivered the heavy rainfall through the Northern Territory and parts of, or well, the moderate rainfall through parts of southwestern Queensland overnight. That's going to meet up with the uh, warm waters of the Tasman Sea through uh, Monday and into Tuesday and we'll see some winds coming out of the northeast as such coming out of the Coral Sea and um, making the most of the Tasman Sea as well and we will be seeing some moderate rainfall here and there through Monday night and into Tuesday morning. I highlighted this in yesterday's forecast update but I do expect some brief periods of heavy rainfall through Monday and Tuesday and whilst rainfall accumulations won't be significant because we're not looking at a kind of a band or banding type rainfall here where we're looking at rainfall just piling into the northeast of New South Wales we will still be seeing some heavy periods of rainfall and some minor flash flooding and some large puddles can be expected through Monday especially towards Tuesday morning. Falls between 10 to 50 millimetres look to be the norm around the Grafton and the Coffs, Coffs Harbour area. Slightly heavier falls up to 75 millimetres are also a possibility at this point in time, but rainfall accumulations won't crack triple figures through Monday and Tuesday. There could be some more moderate falls as well into interior parts of New South Wales with falls between 20 to 40 millimetres expected out there as well. But again, rainfall accumulations are seldom wetter than that. And then looking forward beyond this, there's not an awful lot of rainfall on the forecast as we end the first week of June. And even out towards the second week of June, there's nothing serious coming through at this point in time for the New South Wales coastline. Very good news indeed, but the only problem is with New South Wales is when we start to see these, uh, when we start to see the southern annular mode cycles really uh, kind of swing in, which they are now beginning to do, the chances of east coast lows, especially towards June and July, where the sea temperatures are still comparatively quite warm and are going to be comparatively quite warm this year, that's when we're going to start to see the possibility of more rainfall events for New South Wales. So don't breathe a sigh of relief yet across the mid-north coast of New South Wales. Unfortunately, there is still more rainfall on the way. And whilst we're still on the east coast, I would just like to touch on the drought across Victoria, Tasmania, New South Wales and South Australia, of course. Their driest start to a calendar year on record through much of these areas and the rainfall has just failed to come in any meaningful way so far. And again, if, as we look at the 14-day rainfall accumulations map here, whilst 50 millimetres of the parts of the southern coast of Victoria do look healthy, for the most part, drought-impacted communities are only going to be picking up between 5 to 25 millimetres of rainfall and spread over 14 days. It's still not going to be enough to quench them from one of the 
worst droughts on record through this region of Australia. And it is only getting wor worse with exceptional to extreme drought conditions unfolding across much of South Australia, uh, deteriorating conditions along the Eyre Peninsula as well and also the York Peninsula, very uh, extreme drought conditions into the Murray-Darling uh, basement regions of South Australia as well and through the Murray-Darling catchments through Victoria and parts of New South Wales, drought conditions are severe to exceptional there as well. Significant water lo uh, moisture losses as well through the south coast of Victoria as well and the drought conditions as well still ongoing through the northern parts of Tasmania and uh, to be frank there's no place in southeastern Australia at this point in time that should be in any kind of measurable drought at this point in time just because the winter rainfalls should have arrived a couple of weeks ago especially through Tasmania and Victoria when you're only looking at about 100 millimetres coming through for Tasmania over the next 14 days which is kind of the case here even on the west coast that's not exactly impressive rainfall that's typical stuff at this time of year and we desperately need to see 100 millimetres of rainfall coming through in a week-long period for Victoria or drought impacted areas through Victoria, South Australia and Tasmania. I mean, we're looking at the dust that's being picked up from low pressure systems moving through. They are parched beyond belief and it's just the, the these dust storms are just taking all of the topsoil that needs to be settled by that rainfall. So the drought conditions still worsening across South Australia, Victoria and Tasmania. If you've got any intel on it, let me know in the comment section down below or feel free to flick me a message over on Messenger as well, especially if you've got photos or videos. I'd love to see, or I don't really want to see how bad it is, but it would really help get a grasp of how bad the situation is for South Australia, Victoria and New South Wales. In stark contrast to that, and it does make me feel very guilty being in southwestern Western Australia where we are going to enjoy some very heavy rainfall accumulations, but will these rainfall accumulations be too heavy? Because we're looking at now the potential of 200 millimetres coming through for the first week of June. I never really thought I'd say that with a straight face at the southwest of Western Australia, especially because this type of rainfall is quite foreign to us, 250 millimetres coming through in a week, but it now kind of looks remotely plausible for some regions. And let's explain and break down what is going to be driving that because it is a series of low pressure systems. Now, we're going to think of this in two parts. We've got the first low pressure system coming through tonight into tomorrow, and that's going to provide some moderate rainfall accumulations. And then the next one coming through on Monday and Tuesday is going to provide us with those more serious rainfall accumulations that are going to come through more uh, slow moving cloud band type stuff. We've got a few showers moving through into the southwest of Western Australia. They should clear through early this afternoon and then returning again later on this afternoon. Rainfall accumulations aren't anything to write home about at this point in time. More serious rainfall and the chance of some thunderstorms, which could potentially be severe with locally damaging winds out of the north and the northeast coming through later tonight and into early tomorrow morning. Uh, rainfall shouldn't be too heavy. Falls between 10 to 25 millimetres look to be the norm for the wettest of locations. Perth anywhere between 5 to 20 millimetres of rainfall. If you get yourself under the right thunderstorm or a series of thunderstorms, especially through tonight and into early tomorrow morning, you could be looking at up to 40 millimetres of rainfall. And then rainfall again returning from the main frontal band coming through Friday night and into early Saturday morning and a few showers kicking up through Saturday morning and into Saturday afternoon in the wake of this system. But for the most part, clearing up for uh, at least one day of the long weekend through Saturday afternoon into Sunday and then the rainfall again returning in a pretty dramatic fashion through Monday afternoon and evening and then it's just showers streaming through which could be quite heavy at times through Monday, Tuesday and then into Wednesday as this low pressure system finally heads south of the southwest regions of Western Australia and these showers still continuing through Wednesday and into Thursday, clearing out through Thursday and into Friday and it just looks like four or five days of some pretty serious shower activity which could be between 30 to 50 millimetres a day for the southwest is what's going to drive these potentially very heavy rainfall accumulations. So nothing unusual. Normally when we get a powerful cold front coming through throughout the southwest of Western Australia, we're looking at one or two days of some significant shower activities. And you all know those July days where there's 10 to 25 millimetres on the forecast, storms, it's cold, it's windy, it's miserable. That's what we're going to be seeing for about four days, which could leave up to 200 millimetres in the rain gauges. I'm not going to get too far into detail with these rainfall accumulation numbers here because I still think that there's an element of boogies to these. I don't see 200 millimetres is coming through but the heaviest falls do look to be along the coastal region south of Lancelot and two rocks through the Perth metro area up towards the hills which could see some relatively decent rainfall accumulations as well and then especially south of Perth uh, through Janicot area down towards Mandra, Waruna and then down towards Bunbury and Collie this is where the heaviest rainfall accumulations are expected to be with triple figure rainfall accumulations still possible as far north as Durian Bay, Geraldton, Northampton and Calberry. Perth itself if I had to put a number on it over the next seven days we look at about 110 to 130 mil of rainfall at this point in time. That's my best guess right now. 
And this is what's going to be driving up sea temperatures are still sky high, 24, even pushing 25 degrees Celsius offshore from Western Australia. That's not just warm enough to sustain an extra tropical cyclone's powerful shower barrage, but it will hold a tropical cyclone for a brief period of time. Very warm sea surface temperatures indeed, so plenty of evaporation, and that's why the rainfall is going to be quite heavy across the southwest of Western Australia. So make sure you are ready for it. Make sure you are prepared for it. If you are prone to flooding in uh, some of the low-lying areas, then I'd probably start making some preparations and thinking that the backyard is going to get flooded out because there's a lot of rainfall coming through this long weekend and into early next week. Plenty of weather to be talking about across Australia. If you have enjoyed this forecast update, then please do let me know in the comment section down below. Thank you so much for watching it uh, this Thursday morning. I do hope you have a great remainder of your week as well. A special shout out, of course, to the channel sponsors. Their names are on screen right now. And again, I could not run the show without them, so their support is much appreciated as well. Um, stay tuned for the Lake Air forecast update and video update as well. There's going to be one of those coming either today or tomorrow. I'm looking at tomorrow, but it could come today as well. And leave uh, a weather report for your location in the comment section down below. But that is going to be all for me today. I'll catch you all in the next storm. Goodbye.